By the way, that's the schedule for next weekend, Tailpipes and Tacos. From Studio A in Texas, USA, it's the award-winning All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in wheel time. Just ahead this hour, our new car of the week, the all-new 2021 Chrysler Pacifica. We'll have this week in auto history. We'll have the cruise in calendar and the stories making auto news headlines, among other things. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time car show for Saturday, February 13th, 13th. 13th. 2021. The, the day before Valentine's Day, Don. Hubba hubba. And? Happy Valentine's Day. Will you be my Valentine? Oh, oh isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> You. Do we have any? We have we any? Do. Oh, any sanitizer always, always got to go there for some reason. We always got to go we, there. We do. We do. So we were supposed to have uh, Sabra Johnson with City Classic Cars on. We can't get a hold of him. And he's probably sleeping in or getting ready for Valentine's Day. Or he lives up north someplace. He may he lives run up in some, spring. Well, that's where his shop is. But yeah. he's got some acreage someplace up there. He's de-icing. Yeah, I was just going to say. Well, it's Maybe. not quite there yet. I don't even no, know what the I temperature currently but is. But it's supposed to be cold. There. Yeah, cold. Yeah, it's cold. It's cold enough. Check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my gosh! Let's see. What a visual out here in the uh, in the hinterland. In the hinter- hinterland. The no, hinterland. It was, it was 34 when I left the house this morning. It's currently 36 here. Uh, see, when, it's warming up. It, it gets, is. It, it was gets, 34 when I got here this morning. When it gets to 40, so. Well, it's supposed to be like 10 on Monday morning. And yeah. snow and ice for you, not here. No, not down this far south. Uh-huh. So, so down here at the Smoke and Mirrors Studio. Uh huh. That's the network. So this is Studio A. Studio A. So some people are still going to be. Hey, on the road. hey, hey, forget hey. about it. What Mars? I was just going to say some people are still going to be on the road. Anyway. Why? Well, because I mean they're going <laughs> to want to go to work. The yeah, they're going to be there's all a, over the road. A, there's Listen, a pink and blob moving. I want past you to Bay know City. that that wreck in Dallas was Fort horrific. Worth. Is it was horrific, and you know that sort of thing can happen, just like that, without any notice. You know, it freezes the the rain that's on the roadway, and it just happens instantly, and all of a sudden you don't have any control, and here you go. Because what were you doing? 60, 70 miles an hour. It's yeah. a freeway. Even if you're doing 50, and all of a sudden you have zero control. If you're doing 10, you have no control. Right. Black ice is, there's nothing you can do. And from what I saw, some of the aerials, they were basically in a concrete canyon. They had concrete on both sides right. of them. Because I remember, you know, an growing, elevated section. Yeah, well, going uh, growing up in New York, if you saw black ice and there was something in front of you, you'd dive off as best you can. Don't touch the brake, don't change your speed, and just turn the wheel and try and get off into the grass because in the grass you can get traction there i mean some of those some of those uh, uh those vehicles it was just horrific to watch well, some of uh, yeah, especially the, the video with the uh, fedex truck that crashed in uh, six people were killed yeah and uh, you know we had something similar although thank goodness nobody was actually seriously injured or it would died uh similar to that up there uh in your, yeah, in your part of town up on 1774 just south of 1488 yep. there's a big long bridge and first thing in the morning, you know, the the rain we had yesterday up there, you know, the bridges are going to ice up first, and it iced up. And I think they said 13 people plowed into Let each other. Let me ask you something. Do you have an ice scraper in your car? Um, I don't. I got a credit card. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've used I, a credit card. I actually have one in the garage with the brush on the end of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you're a Yankee. Yeah. Well, at the time when You're I was a damn Yankee, actually, when when I was traveling and you have a rental car, you just automatically just take it out and out of the rental car because I would travel in in uh, the snow belt states. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I don't have a, a scraper in the car. I think I do have one in the garage, but it's you know it's probably. I haven't known an ice old. scraper in I, ever. I don't think. So, but for me, I mean, for me, it's like the frost on the windshield, and I do what Mars does. I I keep some old uh, hotel. Uh, door keys, like a credit card, and I'll use that to scrape the windshield because the last time I turned my heater on full blast on the windshield, Broke it, it went, <laughs> <laughs> and then it went <laughs> again, and I was like, these two huge cracks. But you know, it's a good time now to change your wiper blades, get it done. I know I did. I put some on Kathy's car. Change your wiper blades twice a year. Mm-hmm. At least once a year, but twice a year. Twice a year, yeah. The wiper blade companies say twice a year. Mm-hmm. Hey, Saber. <laughs> Well, we're glad, we're glad you joined us. We were From moving. City Classic Cars, ladies and gentlemen, 
He's a day late and a dollar short, but here he is, Sabra Johnson. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, good. D did we wake you? No, no. I just uh, drove down to the shop. So I left home, I guess, about 8.15, you know, rolls a little whatever out there. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that's what we were thinking. That's how we got on this conversation. Uh, so where where is the shop? And what part of town do you live in? All right, we're in Spring, Texas. I live in Magnolia, so it's about a, you know, normally it's about a twenty-five minute drive in. So I get on two forty-nine, come right in, get off on Luella, come on down, make a right on Steuben Airline, and I'm right here, man. Well, you know that uh, you're under the gun uh, apparently on Sunday night and Monday, and maybe even Tuesday with uh, the, the the all of the bad weather and the and the below freezing temperatures. Yeah, we're gonna close on Monday. We're gonna play it by ear on Tuesday. Uh, I, you know, I meet with my guys every morning, and part of yesterday, I made the decision: Hey, let's just shut it down on Monday, keep everybody safe. You know, a lot of guys work here. A lot of them travel. You know, couples of an hour, hour and a half away just to get here. So. Right. Well, how have you been, and what do you got going on over there at City Classic? Well, I have been outstanding. I mean, thank the good Lord for that. He's been keeping us through this season of COVID, COVID from a physical perspective and COVID from an economic perspective. So I must say that um, we are we're blessed on this side of things and certainly uh, praying for those individuals that are that are affected much more than us. Now, from a business perspective in this climate, uh, the hardest thing for us, uh, and I don't know if this answers your question, but the hardest thing for us right now is the supply chain. The supply chain is broken. The supply chain is damaged. So you have the retailer side of things that can't get supplies. And then you have the manufacturers that can't get the supplies. But the one who get the biggest complaint is the dealer. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, because yeah, so, you're, you're trapped in the middle. Customers are wanting their cars back, but you can't get parts. So, Sabra, yeah. let me ask you. So. Our, our our followers, our, our viewers, uh, all the people that uh, follow us with their um, with their cell phones and their podcasts and that sort of thing, give them an idea of what City Classic Cars is all about. What do you guys do up there? City Classic Cars is about building premier cars. You know, we're not a repair center. We're not a we're not a patch up shop. We're gonna do the whole thing. We're gonna do it full throttle. And we want to build the, some of the best and most iconic and most epic cars throughout the world. We don't compete in a zip code. We don't compete in a state. We're, our, our mantra is the best of the best. And so there's a euphoric greatness that we're all pushing for and achieving for. And that's what we do. Now, furthering that, we're a one-stop shop. There are a lot of guys that farm out. Some of them paint. And they say they build cars and they send the mechanic work and interior work somewhere else. Some guys say that they can, uh, that they can do the interior and the, and the mechanical, and then they farm out the other aspects. We do it all here on site. I do fabrication at my shop. I do chassis work at my shop, body work at my shop, paint work at my shop. I do all of the electronics, all of the engineering, all of the mechanical, all of the upholstery. And I even have a wood fabricator in shop, you know. So it's uh, we're one of the elite shops uh, throughout the entire country, and we build some of the baddest cars on the planet. If you were to pick one of the cars that you have built as a, a really good example of what you turn out, which one would it be? Uh, probably whatever we're working on at the current time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I tell you a couple of couple of ones that we're finishing up now. One is a. Uh, uh, I think I think you'll like them. One is a 1970 Super B. For the most part, it's going back stock. So it's a it's a Super B. It's that sublime gooey green kind of color, and uh, we put some custom graphics on it as far as the uh, B emblem. But for the most part, man, it looks like 1970. It looks like you step back in time, and the car is true to its pedigree, to its history. It, it doesn't. It's not a reimagination of it. And then another one that's exciting is a 1972 Chevelle, which is the complete opposite. It's a reimagination of the of the 1972 Chevelle. So probably those two muscle cars are, are two right now that are kind of on my mind, on my psyche, because 
those are the next two out the door. So what are the power uh, plants in both of them? Is the uh, Super B a 440? Super B is a 440, uh, making a whole lot more power than the stock 440. And the uh, the Chevelle is an LS9. We're oh, gonna wow. We're going to push it with that six-speed. And so, um, yeah, yeah, they, they're both going to make a lot of rumbling noise in the neighborhood, I guess you'd say. They put the, the M in muscle, man. Now, are, are both of these uh, vehicles, were they uh, uh, frame-off rest restorations? Yeah, yeah, off, uh, full throttle from uh, beginning to end. We get them as rust buckets and uh, blow them apart is the first thing we do. And I have a 25-step process. Step 25 is the end, but all these cars started at step one, and they're both somewhere around step 22, 23. Well, so you're, you're getting close to completion on both of them. Both of those are, are really, really soon. Probably Super B uh, probably has like three or four weeks left. And the Chevelle is a little bit more complicated. I got three guys on that. We're going to fast track a little bit. We'll probably have 30 days left. But we'll probably have, I don't know, 400 man hours left in it. You know, a lot, lot more time in the Chevelle than it is in the in the uh, Mopar. How long has that Chevelle been in the shop? Chevelle, I probably had that Chevelle almost two years. And I've had the Mopar probably right around a year, maybe 13 months or something like that. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, well, I'm going to uh, have my car redone and uh, I'm supposed to have it back here in a lot of month or two. In two weeks. It just isn't that way, is it? No, it's unrealistic. And even if you have the money and you're willing to pay at that fast rate, life happens. People get married. People get divorced. Pandemics happen. Yeah. Life happens. And so when you're when you're restoring a car, Life is still happening. And so that's part. It's not always the shop that says, hey, we can't get it. I can probably build them all in 11 months, you know, but life happens. Yes, and of course. You have to kind of let it pace itself a little bit, kind of keep everybody happy. You know, if a car costs about uh, three, four hundred thousand dollars and we finish it in 10 months, boy, that's a whole lot of money in a short span of time. Yeah. Sometimes it feels a little better when it takes 15 months to pay yeah. that. Get, get, getting your money's worth out of it. Over your left shoulder. There's a video over your left shoulder. Are those the vehicles you're talking about? Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at it, but yeah. Yeah, one um, of them is the Super B. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you saw Sublime Green, that's a Super B. Looks yeah. like that one there. Um, now you're going to make me mention everybody costs so I get in trouble. That one is 1956 <laughs> Nomad. And I think you like that one too. It's 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 well as a pro tour and interior. There's a custom interior to it, but for the most part, it's it's stock. Uh, there's a 383 stroker in it, which is nothing but 350. So there's a 383 stroker in it, a custom interior. But even the interior is not too far over the top. We just put four buckets in it and a custom console coming down the center. But for the most part, that's a that's a car you can appreciate. That And when I say appreciate, let me clarify, I don't like to build spaceships. I don't like to build a space shuttle on four wheels, you know what I mean? I like to build cars that are period specific, that are aesthetically pleasing, and that, and that really attempts to uh, preserve and, and restore and bring back to life the original car and not try to make it something new. And something that's never been. So you find a lot of builders today, and I don't knock them, everybody doing their thing. But they want to make a car that's 90% custom and 10% original. And that's not what I'm into. You know, the famous Boyd Coddington, uh, you know, his cars were so unique to their original design that the state of California said, you're not restoring, buddy. You are building cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you are a manufacturer now because your cars lack resemblance and connectivity to its original intended design. Too much and new. So I, I believe in putting the car back like it was. I like a 60-40 split, meaning the car is going to be a minimum of 60% original if I build it. I'm not, going, I, I'm not into building a car that's 90% custom and don't even have inner fender wells and all what? that old Plus, you're looking to build a car that's a driver. You're not necessarily looking to build a trailer queen. No, I, I mean, all my cars got to drive. They got to move. They got to start up. They got to run for me. And, they, they, and you can put them on the trailer because they're not going to they're not gonna ride secretary to the race. They're going to put secretary <laughs> in that trailer and unload her, you know, then let it run. So same thing here with the cars. 
you'll put them in a trailer because, I mean, face it, you have a half a million dollars in some of these cars. And uh, so you want to protect them as best you can and uh, you'll trailer them where you want to go. But at the same time, man, I can crank mine up and let's roll. So, Sabra, I have to jump in here and just kind of change the subject just a little bit. And the fact that, you know, I, I kind of want to get a handle on who you are. And, not, and I'm not talking about the shop truck here, but what is your own personal vehicle that you drive back and forth to work? Uh, the unexciting story says it's an F-250 truck. Uh, diesel, that's the unexciting part. Because I'm always pulling cars or pulling horses. Uh, I'm real big into the horses personally. It's something my, my wife, my family, my children, we do. I live on a ranch, operate a ranch, feed horses every day. Uh, my kids ride every day. And uh, I probably go to a horse sale a couple of times a month. Some things people don't know about me. Uh, we're in the racing business and we race horses. So our competition and, and, and our love for the equestrian sports and the horses is, uh, is, is about as strong as it is for the cars. Now, what cars do I have personally uh, the, from the collector side? Got a lot of vets, uh, that, uh, some new, some old, and, um, you know, Camaros and things of that nature. But when a client comes in and they want a car, if I got it, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so not only do you, you fix these cars and, and you do such a great job, obviously, but you also sell the cars. So you're really a full-service shop there, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I did a car in 1967. I think the last time I talked to you guys, the 1967 Camaro. That was my car. My wife and kids, they drove it. They enjoyed it. And a client came in, it was parked, and he said he was from Argentina. He wanted me to build him a car. He didn't have a car. He saw that Camaro. He said, I want that one. I want you to build that one for me. Well, I mean, so I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it. so Saber, yeah. let, me, let me ask you. One of the things I've always admired about you and what you do, and you can see some of it on your website, is your work with young people, your, your mentoring process. You know, for a while you had a deal going with some of the high schools and stuff. Could you kind of expand on some of that real quick? Yeah, you know, I think we have a responsibility as people in general. And, I, and, and then if I come back to the car industry, we certainly have a responsibility to pass this knowledge off. Yeah. You know, and then you have young people that did not grow up with fathers and uh, or, or, or it could be a mom, too, in the garage, but did not grow up with the heritage of being and tinkering in the garage on the weekends. And so they don't have some of that story. And so I, I think it's wonderful to work with your hands and to and to build something mechanically and so i do everything i can to pass that knowledge off to pat to share this love you know we call it the passion man that passion and so we try to share this passion which is with as many young people as we can and we try to get them infected you know i had three young guys that worked for me uh, as high school apprentice one of them is on his fourth shop in, in Houston, he's at, I think it's called Quick Car. And I was excited about that. I said, man, you serious about this. Another one, I did some work for his father here just this week. His father told me he's at a high-performance shop doing bolt-on performance. I said, man, you got to be kidding me. And then another one, and all these were in the same class. They are at my shop at the same time. And then another one is at McPherson's College studying automotive restoration. Oh, cool. So it just goes to show that. If we give if we give back and we allow these young people to come in and partake in what we're doing, whatever that is, whether it's uh, being in the media like you guys or whether it's building cars like me, when we give young individuals a role model and give them a, a inside of view of what it's like, man, they might catch that passion, you know. So I, I love it. And I feel a responsibility to give back. So are, you, are, you, are you somewhat connected with Klein High School since it's right across the street from you, or are these kids that are coming out of other programs? You know, I, I, I think I'm about six or seven years in with Klein, and we established a relationship with them some years ago, and uh, that's where we get most of our young people from. Now, I haven't had young people in my shop in about nine months because of the COVID. COVID and yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, we partnered with that school. Other schools have asked us, and, and the shop and truck that client is like, no, no, keep it exclusive. 
<laughs> no, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we've, 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 we've had Plus, a, they're close, you jo- know. Jonathan Couch on the show a number of times from uh, Klein Forest. And I know, yeah. uh, you know, Jonathan does a real nice job as well, mentoring his students and following them after they go through the program. So it's good that you keep in touch with them because I think that that's – still part of the mentorship after they've passed through your program where are you what are you doing and how do you, how are you continuing to expand because uh, i've i've heard great things about mcpherson as far as a uh, school to go learn restoration so process. what about your own children are they mentoring to get into uh, your shop as well yeah well my daughter uh, i have two of them one is 14 let me see they just have birthdays one is 14 and one is eight you better get it so right. The 14 <laughs> year old is really, really big in the equestrian. Uh, she really deals with the horses and rides them and trains them. And so she and my wife, they really spend a lot of time doing that. But when we get behind on paperwork, I have her come in here and put some stuff in the system for me. And the, and the eight year old is the opposite. She's all into the cars. We ride down the road. And she's like, Daddy, that, that's a classic over there. I'm way over there behind the bushes. You can kind of see it. I think it's a Chevrolet. No, it's a Mustang. So, she, she, you know, they're always at the shop. And my little one is, you know, if she can, she cuts school every day to uh, come to the <laughs> shop every day. So, yeah, they're a part of, of, of this passion. It's in them. It's in their spirit. And they're certainly into all we... old and all things in between. Well, yeah. And, and that's part of it is passing that passion, as you call it, on to the youth, because if, if you don't share your knowledge, it's lost. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then my, my, my children get an opportunity to connect with me, you know, not to go too back in the story. My father died when I was two and a half. And the way I connected with him was through stories that my grandmother shared. And many of those stories were associated with a car. And so cars is a way that I intrinsically connect with my father. And, and just remember my grandmother and remember my uncles and my cousins. And, and when I was a teenager, I had an opportunity to work with my cousin who had Porsches and exotics and, 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 and he would restore those. And so it's just in my blood, it's in my DNA and it's part of the fabric of who we are. And so my children are, they got the bug is in their blood, whether they want it or not. And, and that's one of the things I think is so great because not only are you passing it to them, but you're teaching them. And, and you're keeping them busy. I think it's a real important part that, that, you know, particularly the kids at Klein or whoever, you know, they don't have time or, or, or they realize there's something else to do besides get in trouble. Sabri, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. City Classic Cars. Uh, you can find them online, and uh, we'll hope to check in with you again soon. Hey, thank you so much, guys. Oh, you guys are always the best. Y'all take care. Thank you. Appreciate you too. it, man. Time now for our car review of uh, this hour uh, here on the In Wheel Time Show. The 2021 Chrysler Pacifica available trim levels include the Touring, the Touring L, the Hybrids, of which I'll get to in a minute, the Limited, and the Pinnacle. The reviewed trim level is the Pinnacle. All-wheel drive, top of the line all the way. Of course. What size, what class? It's a minivan. It seats up to seven passengers. Exterior features, well, this is all-new front fascia with a bigger grille and the squinty headlights. They've brought it up to date. I like it. Uh, Extra large rear hatch, second and third row, stow and go in the floor. Now, does that does not include the hybrids. because that's the battery battery pack. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. So what I liked about it, the rear fascia body-wide lighting on it. It uh, it really kind of brings it up to date. It kind of has that um, uh, the old-school Dodge look to it where they took the lights and moved them all the way across mm-hmm. the back. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, interior highlights. It's got the new Uconnect 5 infotainment system. Nice. Uh, yeah. With the 10-inch touchscreen available and theater streaming option, nice. which my car had. Theater streaming. Theater streaming for the for the kids in the back. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, maybe you can bring so it up connect, on the front So it'll screen. connect to a streaming service. But I want you to look at the upholstery in nice. this thing. Do you see it? That's it's gorgeous. Pretty. All quilted leather seats that even, can you see the back seats there? Mm-hmm. Do you see like the pillow. little pillow? Yeah, it I comes see that. with two pillows. 
Oh, how cool. Of course, that would be the first thing that got stolen my out of pillow. there. Uh, it ain't my pillow. <laughs> um, the, uh, the screen is integrated into the dash in this uh, vehicle, which I really like. So the screen doesn't sit on top of the dash or is not part of the dash. Or there doesn't you can elevate see it. from the middle of the dash. Yeah, it, exactly. it looks, looks contiguous. Those are large vents, too. Well-placed controls, beautiful quilted leather seats, detailed stitching throughout. This is a high-end vehicle. Uh, Cargo trunk room. Well, how much do you want? It's co- of course it has the uh, uh, stow and go system in it as well. Uh, cargo and passenger flexibility. Tons of that. 3.6 liter V6, 287 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. It has a nine speed automatic transmission in it. It can tow up to 3,600 pounds. That's a lot. This is a van, a minivan. Nice. Uh, city. It gets 19 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway for a combined of 20. I got 23 miles per gallon over 151.8 miles. What I liked about it, plenty of power for a family of four with luggage. Of course, you got room in the back for the other kids. The, the tag-along kids. The tag-along kids from the next-door neighbor. I yeah. like it. I think uh, that's a, a hybrid cool alternative is available for this, as I mentioned, and uh, that is uh, kind of a new thing, the hybrid. Mm-hmm. So it's something that you may Everybody's order. building a hybrid. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, it's all leading up to all Fully electric. Yeah. Ride and handling, smooth, controllable ride. I mean, this this thing is is really like a limousine. I like it. Pricing, uh, base trim price is fifty three three ninety as for the, for tested the pinnacle. for the pinnacle. Price is tested with a few options fifty four thousand eight hundred eighty five dollars. That's not bad at all. Base model price, if you just want a Pacifica, it starts at thirty five forty five. Oh no, get the pillow. Get the pillow. Get the pillow. Yeah, that's it. Get the Com- pillow model. Competitors, Honda Odyssey. $31,790 is where it starts. Toyota Sienna is $34,460. And the Dodge Caravan. Yes, they still make the Dodge Caravan. You can get into one of those. It's the old school, mm-hmm. right? Uh, $27,530. They've paid them for all the tooling on that one a long time ago. Yeah. Exactly. And and they still sell. Otherwise, they if they didn't sell them, they wouldn't make that them. The but original. they still make them. That yeah. was the, the Iacocca original. Yeah, the Caravan. So that's the review Beautiful of the truck. 2021 Chrysler Pacific. I like it. Time now for the cruise-in calendar. And we've got a cruise-in that we're going to be attending next Saturday, as a matter of fact. Yep. Tailpipes and Tacos out at Kingsland and, right? Tailpipes and Tacos. 99. Kingsland. You gave me that look. <laughs> out at uh, 99 uh, in Katy. Not the Katy Loopy Tortillas. The loopy tortillas at Kingsland. And in Katy. In Katy. Uh-huh. So, uh, and we'll be there. Uh, the show the show's going to be on uh, 8 to 11. And believe me, people start showing up at 6.30 yeah, in the morning. The show must go on. To, uh, to, sh- to do it. And weather permitting, you know, if it's, if it's raining and stuff, uh, they'll, they'll reconsider what they're going to do. So kind of stay tuned to our uh, Facebook page, and uh, we'll keep you abreast of uh, what's happening. Uh, this afternoon, Dreams on Wheels Fest in Pinehurst at 1 o'clock. Uh, 2 p.m. is the Huntsville Classic Car Show. Uh, also, the uh, Houston F-Body Community Meet is going to be today at 3 o'clock at uh, Fountain Lake Drive in Stafford. 5 p.m. tonight is the Lion Dance and Cars in Katy. Tell me about this one in Stafford again. It's uh, Houston F-Body Community. So it's Camaros it, and Firebirds. Is it going to be at uh, Autos? I, I, yeah, Autos and uh, off of Fountain Lake Drive. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, the 5 p.m. tonight is the Lion Dance uh, and Cars in Katy. Now, the Lion Dance, remember, this is a Japanese New Year as well as this weekend, so they're going to have oh, a oh, oh. Lion Dance. I was thinking two-step. Oh, and no. It's at, I, the, I, at I, the Faux Noodle House at uh, 26 440. Serious. Uh, FM 1093 in Katy, Texas. That okay. actually, I think that sounds like, cool. yeah, go get you a bowl of cool. noodles and show your car. And, and then, of course, a, the Kima car meet t- uh, tonight at 6 p.m. Tomorrow is Wheels and Heels Valentine's Day. Hey, <laughs> I'm in. Ray Ray's in. Yeah, well, it's at 1215 Pinemont Drive in Houston. So Let's go. <laughs> it, it, it should be a lot of fun. You can wear the red pumps because it goes with the heels. Thank you so much. 
Uh, also, tomorrow at noon kind of like is a, a Cars and Carding Valentine edition at the uh, cart, uh, go-kart place. Alec oh, Udell's my God, outdoors. In, uh, in, in Conroe. <laughs> uh, all of this is all somewhat weather permitting. Um, and then uh, the All-American uh, Muscle Car Meet at the Kroger's on 99 east of I-45 uh, up in spring. And then... Um, uh, you know, Freddy's uh, Steak Burger uh, is going to be Eldridge and Katie on Sunday and, and Wednesday nights. All weather permitting. All weather. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com along with Twitch. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcasts, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, February 20th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone's invited. You will see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all at one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan well, Holt brings you Houston's trying to get an audio cruise check. in. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, February 20th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, February 20th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy, weather permitting. 